Hey guys, so we're all anxious to get a jump start on spring and I'm gonna share some tips with you. But here is my question of the day and I really value your input. More importantly, I think other followers who read your comments will find these very instructive. And that is tell me what zone you're in and what you can safely do right now in your garden zone to get a jump start on spring. Because depending on whether or not you're in zone five or you're in zone eight, those kinds of garden tasks will change. Some of them, and hopefully the ones I'm gonna talk about today are universal, but some of them are gonna be very specific to where your garden. So if you're an experienced gardener, please share with me, with new gardeners, and everybody else who's part of this kind of gardening community what you are able to do right now in your gardens. Well, this idea was inspired by Garden Gate magazine. I just love this. And, and the article was entitled, Six Things You Can Do for a Faster Spring Start. So I thought we'd talk about those today. But this also leads me to my question of the day, and that is, are you subscribed to Garden Gate magazine? Now, I have to tell you that one of the things I love about my job is I have met some incredible people over the course of these past 15 years. And one of them is my friend, Kristen who's the editor of Garden Gate Magazine. She and I just hit it off uh, when she came out to shoot my garden years and years ago, and we've become best buds since then. In fact, I'm getting ready to do an article on topiary for her in one of the, her upcoming issues. But I love Kristen, and I love what she has done with the magazine. And I think this magazine is especially good for new gardeners because it just so clearly outlines Lines, things that you can do regardless of your garden zone and this isn't a commercial I don't get it I don't get any stipend from this or whatever I just really love the magazine and I love you Kristen so this is my a little shout out to a wonderful article so I took it to heart and these are some of the the things that I can do now to get a jump on spring now I realize a lot of you are gonna say oh I'm under six inches of snow I'm up in Canada I'm wherever and I understand that completely but whenever it is the appropriate time for you to get a jump start on spring then here are some of those tips so number one and I love them because they're just they are just really outlined so beautifully here and we're trying to wake up our garden so first is start with the soil and so I am doing that and what I'm doing is some of you have commented that I haven't talked about my works leaf shredder recently and that's because most of the leafy debris right now that I'm using are they're just full leaves they're they're not shredded I just blow them from my lawn and onto the flower beds I'm not shredding them but when I want to use it as a soil amendment to improve the quality of the soil itself then I will shred them and I have Stuart what happened to my bag of leaves there it is I've got bags of leaves just waiting to do just that and on a day when it's not quite so windy and when it's warm I will shred a bunch of those leaves 
What I'll probably also do is mix it with some kind of organic granular fertilizer when I get ready to incorporate the leaves into the soil. And you can use any, any brand you like, uh, Espoma, this is from Brex. Um, there are different varieties that you can get out there. But then what I'll do is I'll really incorporate that into the soil, particularly in my potager area of where my edible are planted. So I will do that. That will break down over time. It will improve the tilth and the viability and the drainage of the soil in a very natural way. Now one thing to be mindful of, if you are unlike me, we have had an extremely dry winter. We haven't had a lot of moisture. But if you're in a zone or in a geographical area where you have been gifted with lots of precipitation, then you want to be careful don't go out there and tread on your uh, garden soil or in your flower beds when the soil is too wet. Don't start working that soil because you can irreparably damage the tilth and the friability of the soil. So wait till it's dry enough. For me, another thing that I'm doing to, to get ready to prepare my soil is I'm having to water. And so some of my beds and pots that are extremely dry, I'm having to water today. One thing that I'm really going to be attentive to, however, is that I am going to turn off my sprinkler system and I'm also going to um, unhook my hoses again after I water because we've got a real cold blast coming through tomorrow. So there you go. Step one is to consider and work on the quality of your soil. Well, another thing you can do to get a head start on spring is to clean up winter damage. Now, I use lots of evergreens in my landscape, and I'm going to guess you probably do too. You probably have all sorts of deciduous shrubs that have lost their leaves. And you can safely, at this point in time, right now, while it's still winter, you can go in and prune out any dead or diseased wood, or primarily dead wood. Now, if I had some dead wood inside, these uh, boxwoods, I could go ahead and safely prune that out. In fact, I just did it to some of these boxwood balls in these pots. I'm not going to be forcing any premature new growth by doing that kind of pruning because the wood itself is dead. I am not going to prune anything that would force out new fresh growth that isn't already temperature tempered to the cold temperatures. The other thing that I did, and I would encourage you to do now, before they get busy, is have all of your tools sharpened and maintained. I just got all of my tools back from someone who professionally sharpened them. You can just do a Google search in your area to find out someone who can sharpen your tools for you. And one thing I did, this is a little tip, I made sure to put an address label on all of my different uh, tools, my pruners, all of those kinds of, of uh, you know, my, my little hand trowel, all of my tools, I made sure that I marked them with my name on them so they would know who they belonged to because I don't want to lose some of my favorite, oops, there's a little, little burst of wind, Stuart. I don't want to lose some of my favorite tools and pruners. So there you go. Prune out winter damage and take care of your pruning utensils. Well, in my last Wednesday walkabout, I talked uh, about some of the bulbs that are starting to erupt from the winter soil. I've got some little daffodils, I've got some hyacinths, I've got a number of bulbs that are perennialized and that come back from one year to the next. A lot of these, by the way, I bought in a forced state. These were little tete-a-tete -tete daffodils that I bought at Trader Joe's. And then I then, after they finished blooming inside, I brought them outside. Now, these that are in the ground and are coming up from the previous year, not the tulips that I plant uh, freshly each fall, but these that are coming up from previous years, I do, as soon as they erupt, give them a little dose of granular fertilizer. It's typically some kind of organic blend and this is, uh, this is an organic granular bulb food from, I don't know, even know how to pronounce that, from Job's. And I'll just kind of sprinkle it on. 
and then I will water it in. This is especially good for things like my alliums and um, O. allium schuberti, the allium globe master, any daffodils that have been in the ground for a long time. Those that come back one year after another, then I do supplement them with a little bit of of organic fertilizer. So I am tending to my bulbs in the landscape to get a jump on spring. So to continue with my From the Pages of Garden Gate magazine, the next thing on my list is to tend to my perennials. So some of these, like this, this is a tall phlox. I can, I guess, go ahead and prune back some of the dead canes. But typically on these, I will go ahead and just leave some of these stalks just for winter interest. That's kind of an aesthetic choice that you're going to make yourself about your own garden. One thing I'm not going to do is start removing all of the mulch that I've got around them. In this case, it's just leafy debris. If I had, a, oh, like a beautiful compost or something that had eroded away, I would make sure to replenish that compost. The other thing that I'm going to look for is if any of this, uh, any of my perennials, and tall phlox is particularly prone to it, if any of them are showing signs of powdery mildew or some other kind of viral disease, then I will definitely go ahead and cut them back all the way at the base. I will discard that foliage, not in my compost pile, but in the trash because I don't want those diseased spores to spread. And that way I will get a jump start on not only uh, cleaning up my garden beds, but also disease prevention. And then a little bit later, I might want to treat this with some kind of organic fungicide or something to prevent that powdery mildew from recurring. So now let's move on to the next jump start on spring tip. Well, my next tip is to check in on your tender plants. Now, that just depends on how you garden. In your case, it might be dahlia tubers or canna tubers that are starting to erupt from the soil and you want to treat them accordingly. For me, I have all sorts of tender uh, herbs, topiaries, things of, along that line that I have to bring in. And I wanna make sure that I keep them watered. I have been guilty in the past of bringing them inside and then I don't water them because they are in, in a location that's not really convenient and then I lose those plants. So today I'm working out here in my studio and in my office. The much larger specimens I had them carted away to a greenhouse, but I've got a few in here that I'm tending myself, and I want to make sure that I keep keep them moistened. Some of these, like these ferns, I have cut all the way back, and they're starting to put out new growth. Very shortly, I'll start feeding these so that I get a beautiful new specimen that I might use indoors. Now, I don't expect these plants, my myrtle topiaries, uh, some of my olive trees, even my rosemaries, I don't expect them to look great this time of year. They're outdoor plants that are just temperate, and they want to be outdoors. So I am willing for them to look less than their best while they're inside because I know that they will respond to the warm rains and the warm sunshine when I put them back outside in the spring. I will check them for any signs of disease or pests. I can clip out any dead wood, but basically they're just kind of in a holding pattern until they can move back outside. So that is my, my next tip, which is just keep an eye on your tender plants. Okay, my last tip is to just start prepping for all of your container plantings. Now for me, part of that process of thinking about my container plantings is just how many I want to have. And I have talked ad nauseum about the fact that this year I want to make my container plantings simpler, have fewer but larger pots, and just be a little bit more discriminating about them. But I'm also prepping my containers by making sure that I have my supplies on, in hand and ready to rock and roll when I am 
ready to start planting those containers. So right now, before the chaos and the frenzy of spring arrives, and there's so much to do, I'm gonna go ahead and get an inventory of really good quality potting soil, some slow release fertilizer for my pots, some perlite, maybe some chicken grit, and of course my beloved gravel to top dress the pots with. I'm gonna have all of that in supply and get all of my potting areas very organized and well stocked before spring arrives. These are just some small things that we can do now, guys, that, um, that aren't premature, no matter what your garden zone is but we can be thinking about and addressing on those really beautiful days when we've got an itch to get started in the garden. Let me know what you guys are doing to prep for spring. Well, if you've held on this long, here is my outfit of the day. It's still warm out today, but I can tell that there's a front coming through and it's going to really get cold tomorrow, Stuart. So just FYI, we're shooting this outside today because we won't be able to do it a little bit later. Um, so my earrings, my earrings were a gift from someone and I don't know where they got them, but they're just kind of sweet. I like the, the shape of a daisy. Uh, my top is just from Target. I've had it for years the t-shirt underneath it is one I had on yesterday uh, be a good person that was a gift from my kiddos uh, my britches I also had on yesterday and these are uh, loft and Taylor loft I got these at Goodwill and my boots are Mary boots and these you guys I just love these I think they're adorable I have them in three different colors and um, and they're just and they're just great and they give me a jolt of color and I really like them because I think not only are they good for gardening but they're good for apres gardening so there you go there's my outfit of the day <music>